So if we look at first and foremost any physical server, the licensing rules to, uh, for the amount of cores that you need to license for in a server is 16 cores per server as a minimum with a minimum of eight cores per processor. And why is this the case? This is basically when Microsoft moved from per processor licensing to per core licensing, they took a snapshot of what was the most current and up-to-date core count for most servers, and they found um, that 16 cores was the minimum that you found in the um, machines that were present at that moment in time. So Microsoft said, okay, we're moving from per processor to per core, but we also don't want to cannibalize on our own revenue. So we're going to put a minimum of 16 cores per server and uh, within that eight cores per processor, anything above that you will, would need to additionally license. So that minimum is there for 16 cores per server. But if you have a server, for instance, with more than 16 cores, you need to license more than those 16 cores, obviously. Licenses are sold in per two core or per 16 core packs. Uh, our advice is usually to buy the multiple of the two core license packs instead of the 16 core license pack, basically because it's easier to divide if you have for instance, servers with non-multiples of 16, for instance. On the screen, we will go through three different examples on how to license the amount of cores per server, starting with a server with two processors, the blue circles or squares with each eight cores. And as you would have guessed, you would require 16 core licenses uh, for this server to be licensed correctly. The second example that we wanna to touch on is what happens if I have a old server, for instance, with only one processor with four cores, you would still be required to license this amount of 16 cores uh, minimum. And in the third example, what we're gonna look into is what happens if I have four processor machine with 12 cores per processor. Well, then you would need to license the amount of four times 12 or 48 core licenses to cover all the cores within that server correctly. This changes uh, with virtual machine licensing because with virtual machine licensing, Microsoft has made a reference to the model that they already had, which is the Azure Hybrid Benefit model, where basically per VM, the core count that you would need to license on a bare minimum is a minimum of eight licenses per virtual operating system and environment. And there was a minimum of 16 core minimum per customer, but then has been removed. So you could just license one VM uh, this way if you wanted to. Again, also here, I license our salt impacts of two or 16 cores for Windows Server, that doesn't change. You, the advice always to procure, the, again, the two core license pack as this provides greater flexibility. As a side note, Microsoft sells server subscriptions for Azure, which you can run on-prem. So if you purchase, for instance, through the CSP program, you can buy Windows Server standard subscription licenses per eight cores, which is different to the two or the 16 core, but that's basically to allow also the purchase of server subscriptions within the CSP program. And you can use those to your benefit in this virtual machine model or even in the physical machine model, but it might not make that financial sense because they are quite a bit more expensive than for instance, buying through an enterprise agreement. One big caveat to virtual uh, core uh, licensing, virtual machines that you license this way. So if you license solely the virtual machine, not the physical machine, it will require software assurance on all your licenses because this is a software assurance benefit. So if you don't have software assurance on your Windows Server licenses, you cannot do virtual machine licensing. This also means that you immediately have license mobility within the server farms for all your VMs licensed. And if you wanna know more about license mobility, we will link that in the description as well, because this is an important topic. If you're not aware of it, we're covering this in our basic licensing series and it's important to be aware of. And the final note, Microsoft calls this the flexible virtualization benefit. This means that you can use your licenses at outsources as well. So whereas previously it was pre prior to October, 2022, it wasn't possible for you to hand your licenses to an outsourcer to use them to your benefit only in a dedicated motion. You can now also give these licenses if you have software assurance to your outsourcer to use your licenses in their 
their shared environment. This used to not be possible, but with the changes in October 2022, Microsoft has opened this up. Again, I also want to cover three examples here. So in the first example, we see the most simple one. We have a VM. A VM has eight core licenses. So how many licenses should I, uh, eight cores? So how many licenses should I require? Well, you require eight core licenses. Now in the second example, I have a virtual machine with only four cores. So what is the amount of licenses that I would require in that scenario? I would still need to license eight cores because there's an eight core per virtual machine minimum. And finally, if I run a very big VM with 24 cores, what would I need to license? You would need to license all 24 cores for that VM. So you would need 24 core licenses.